Good morning, folks. Yesterday, we watched a solar eruption over the northeastern limb, and then one in progress departing to the right. Since then, the sun has been silent as the grave. All we have is potential. We'll begin with the sunspots. They will be more present this weekend than they were to start the week. That's them coming over the limb here. Still no flaring to speak of as of yet. No delta-class sunspots as of now, but the important thing is that we have beta complexity, and they'll be turning in for a few days. Let's hope for something, because while the mega flare is bad, having too little flare activity can be just as bad or worse. Three days of solar wind here might be confusing to you. It appears we have some crazy CME spikes all over the place, but in reality, those are the anomalous swirls associated with tremendously low solar wind pressure. The speed baseline tells the tale, as has been happening more and more. The solar output is dropping so much that we're seeing incongruity and sputter events in the solar wind. It's been an amazing two days for gamma ray bursts. This latest technically came from the Norma constellation, but it almost overlaps Scorpio, making three bursts in a row from the same general area of the sky. Well, folks, the planets and space weather factors are low right now, but this corona hole should at least give us a minor quake watch when it faces Earth, right? Technically, yes, but watch the red core of the opening on Iswa. Without the other factors bolstering this coronal hole, its weakening down to orange means that this below average few days of quaking since the last uptick might prevail a few more. How about some top articles? I remember the first exoplanet ever discovered, and how as recently as 2013 it was still considered a big deal to find one. Now we find them by the dozens, like MIT just found, and all of these are Earth-sized and rocky. I want website members to comment below on what that means for planet habitability under the Starwater paradigm. While I'm here at MIT, they've also recently had a great article on analyzing the clouds of exoplanets. Indeed, this is a cool time to be looking outward last two stories. First, a brand new study shows that rogue waves might not be so rebellious after all. They follow patterns and can even be predicted. A significant advance in the field to be sure. And last but not least, NASA's flying saucer test is go. Launch window begins at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time today. Story linked for you below along with the links for where to watch it live. Major Hurricane Blanca down south with her Earth spot companions left and trailing up to the west coast. On the pressure overlay, white is high, purple is low. Each is significant in its own right, but obviously the hurricane is the major concern right now. It is heading north towards Baja, and given the Earth spot quake potential in that area, that Corona Hole can feel free to lose as much power as it wants. We'll have two alerts tonight in the United States. The north central areas will take severe weather once again tonight. Eyes on that, but back east, a weaker system shouldn't have the severe storms like the plains do, but there will be thunder and flash flooding potential. Both regions take heed of your local forecast tonight. Over in Europe, the primary storm system has become this tiny little low sitting next to Ireland. It will be the major concern for at least two days as the northern system remains but fades away bit by bit. Down under, we see that the eastern low has finally left New Zealand while those trailers race to catch up after shifting to the north. Their clouds barely scrape the southern coastlines now. It's mostly a nice day in this part of the globe. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. If you sent a support email, check for a response. You've got about one day left to lock in the lower membership price for life with the steps I laid out for you. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.